Today, in an attempt to destroy a network of ISIS tunnels in Afghanistan and also to distract the media from discussing any other topic, the US military dropped the largest non-nuclear bomb in its arsenal. Also known as the mother of all bombs, the GBU-43 is a 21,600 pound GPS guided munition first tested back in March of 2003 for possible use in Iraq at that point. It never was actually used and we believe that only about 15 were produced. It was dropped from an MC-130 aircraft in the Achin province, uh, district of Nangarhar province, close to the border with Pakistan. And Sean Spicer <laughs> announced in a press conference today, we targeted a system of tunnels and caves that ISIS fighters use to move around freely, making it easier for them to target US military advisors and Afghan forces in the area. He went on to say uh, that the device was a large, powerful, and accurately delivered weapon, which I think is an interesting descriptor to put on a weapon that has a blast radius of one mile, that it's mm -hmm. accurate. Mm -hmm. right? Well, it's kind of difficult to miss at that point, I'd say, Sean Spicer. But also, just in case Maria Bartiromo is watching, it was unmanned, thank God. <laughs> uh, and the United States took all precautions necessary to prevent civilian casualties and collateral damage, or at least to the extent that you can with a weapon that once again has a blast radius of one mile. Right. Now, this is a relatively uninhabited area, I suppose, but I'm not sure exactly how you avoid civilian casualties with something that large. And we're gonna show you sort of a description of what we're talking about here a little bit later on. And you know, Spicer went on to say that Hitler never <laughs> dropped sunk a to bomb this level. This big, right? no. He didn't. So <laughs> I don't know, I'm not an expert on military weaponry. So this is based on the research that I just did and what I learned about you know, the different types of bombs, non-nuclear bombs that our military currently has. And so everyone keeps reporting this as the, the largest non-nuclear bomb in our arsenal. Yes. But then it turns out that there's something known as the GBU-57, that's 30,000 pounds. And so that's the father of all bombs. That's the father. Well, that's of all actually bombs. the Russians do have the father of all bombs. <laughs> right. So I'm not familiar with that. I am a yeah. bit of a nerd when it comes to military technology. That might have been tested, but not actually produced, perhaps. So okay, that that might be the case. But I'm I not also sure. I also read that the bomb that they used wouldn't necessarily destroy underground like tunnels and caves. I mean, it's designed in a way yeah. that it can do that. Mm -hmm. We have other munitions that are designed for that. So look, that's that's the official thing that they said. We did it because we want to destroy these tunnels. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that's the case, but we're not stupid and we can, we can speculate about other reasons. I mean, some people are saying it might be strike back because a Green Beret was killed in that district last week, I believe. I guess that's possible. It could be that this is supposed to send a strong signal to either Assad or Putin or North Korea. We don't know for sure, um, but we do know one thing. This is the exact sort of thing that Donald Trump would do, that he would get into office and he would say, give me your biggest bomb, what do we have, let's drop mm -hmm. it. And then he'll temporarily feel like he's packing something. Um, but then he would brag about it and he is gonna brag about it in the video we're gonna show you. But look at how he sort of doesn't take too much credit for it, which I, th I think is interesting. You're gonna see that right here. Very, very proud of the people. Another, uh, really another successful job. We're very, very proud of our military. Just like we're proud of the folks in this room, we are so proud of our military and it was another successful event. Did you authorize it, sir? Uh, everybody knows exactly what happened, so. And what I do is I authorize my military. We have the greatest military in the world and they've done a job as usual. So we have given them total authorization and that's what they're doing. And frankly, that's why they've been so successful lately. If you look at what's happened over the last eight weeks and compare that really to what's happened over the last eight years, you'll see there's a tremendous difference. And this was another very, very successful mission. Two, two quick points on that. One, uh, like I'm glad that he thinks that things have been going well over the last eight, eight weeks. That's fine. He should present some evidence of how that's going. Uh, but then he did insult the military's efforts for the past eight years, saying that we've been so much better. He realized it's the same military that was functioning then. And then also, when given the opportunity to say that he authorized it, he said, I think everybody knows what's going on. Right. Well, what does that mean? This is a guy who ne he takes credit for things that have nothing to do with him. You know, that's true. And and you know, he said first of all, one thing you have to remember about Donald mm -hmm. Trump is he said about ISIS a while ago when running when he was just Donald Trump, which I sort of think he is still. But he said um, we're going to bomb the shit out of ISIS. That's mm -hmm. a quote from Donald Trump. And yeah. So this is what's this is the uh, the realization of that, and this is what's happening right now. 
another part of this, I mean, Joseph Votel, who's the head of Central CENTCOM over there, said it to John Nicholson, who's in Afghanistan. This is what we're going to do. We're going to proceed. But this is Donald Trump, and this is Donald Trump. As far as we know, he could have just had a good time last Thursday in Syria mm -hmm. and said, here we go again. Now, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but that's the only thing that he can point to as a positive in his administration right now. So why wouldn't he keep doing this? And well, he could try to. That's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting perspective, especially because the media immediately changed their tune toward Trump as soon as he took some action in Syria, right? Well, he did become presidential. He became very <laughs> presidential. I mean, he acted on a motion and decided no, to- we, we thought he became presidential. You don't actually become presidential until you drop the mother of all bombs. Well, that's true. And too. that's the thing. This yeah. is the sort of, the, the, we, we're all, you know, we're Americans. Like in the media, you there's only one position you can have on patriotism in the military. You basically all have to agree there. So if we drop the mother of all bombs, then that must be way better than when we drop regular bombs. Chris Wallace said, uh, Trump is now showing a willingness to use force that we haven't seen for eight years. Really? Look, this individual bomb, way more destructive than regular bombs. But does he know that we've dropped hundreds of thousands of bombs? Trump supporters, and I've seen the tweets, they're all enthusiastic, seem to think that rampant bombing isn't a thing we've tried to use against terrorists in the Middle East up until right. this point. That's all we've used up until this point. Now, this is worse. But it's not fundamentally different. And really fast, I want to show some pictures because whenever you see, they're going to show a million tests of the Moab from back in 2003. And you're going to see it blowing up in the desert and you think, yeah, that'll, that'll kill some terrorists. And uh, as of right now, Trump can't suddenly begin using these willy nilly. We have 15. We could produce more, but we've got 15. But this could be a test by either Trump or the military to see, is this something that the American people will accept being used mm -hmm. on a wider basis? And they want you to think of desert huts being blown up. But this is a massive weapon. And so for scale, I want you to see what this actually does, how many people could be killed by this. So we're gonna show you uh, to scale, let's bring this up. Here's what would happen in LA if you were to drop this bomb in uh, downtown. That uh, the central circles is the destruction of even hardened structures. Nothing survives that, like a nuclear blast. This, the bigger middle one destroys skyscrapers, all of that, just wipes everything out too. But the people d dining at Bestia down there, they're fine. It's yeah, they're probably out. fine yeah. in Bestia. Yeah. No, it actually it extends beyond that, but USC? it doesn't do as much damage. Safe. Right. Jesus is so fine, the Dodgers are good. That would, that would kill tens of thousands of people at the very least. Let's go to the next one. You'll see it in uh, in New York. I would have put it a little bit higher up, but unfortunately the tool was broken when I tried to generate my own today. Uh, wiping out millions of people potentially. Yeah. We go ahead to London because of course, we're never gonna talk about what if these weapons were to be, you can go on the next one. What if these weapons were to be used against us? What precedent are we setting that we now believe we can use these weapons? If someone else does, and we're not the only one who has these, Russia has weapons like this, can we say these weapons are truly unacceptable? when we choose to use them? I think one of the biggest issues is that there's been so much fear mongering in the media and there's so much love for military action and bombing the bad guys that I think that most Americans, not most Americans, but a sizable chunk of Americans will see this type of action and applaud it. There were people, this is anecdotal, but there were people on my feed on social media today who aren't necessarily very interested in, in politics. They're just kind of casual consumers of political news. And so they kind of know what's going on. And then they read the headlines of, about Trump, you know, sanctioning what just happened today. And they see it as a sign of strength because yeah. they see the headlines indicating that he used a bomb against ISIS. And so they think, okay, he's taking some strong action against ISIS. He's actually doing something. That's a strong president. One of my friends used that statement, strong president. And so they're not, look, people who think that way aren't bad people. We've been conditioned by the media to think that way. And so people aren't gonna visualize the destruction the way that you just made our audience visualize it, right? Mm -hmm. The fear is very, Apparent right now, we've been told over and over again that you know Islamic terrorism, it, uh, ISIS specifically poses an imminent threat to Americans. People are scared, understandably so. But you have to really think about whether or not this type of force and this type of foreign policy actually does keep us safer yeah. in the future. And you know, it depends. If this is really a remote area, you're not killing a bunch of civilians, and it does successfully destroy tunnels that ISIS is using, then I'm all for it, right? But 
right now, we don't know what the impact of this bomb has been, if it even achieved what they said that it was gonna achieve. They said it was it, successful, it, and if, do they know? Do, yeah, they yeah. don't know, and, and you don't know about success because with, with, when you're fighting a foe like ISIS, mm -hmm. even if you wiped out every single person, that's all you did who, that it was intended for, all it takes is one person to drive a truck into a, yeah. a building in Buenos Aires and they wake up again, and then yeah. the whole right. world is afraid again. So this is not typical. One other point, two other points I wanna make very quickly. Uh, he did Syria last Thursday, he did this today. The Congress is on vacation. There's nobody in Congress mm -hmm. right now. They're on yeah. their recess for Easter. Uh, this, it's very easy or it's easier to do these things when Congress is on recess, you don't have to answer. But after the bombing over the weekend last week, uh, uh, last week when in Syria, he started to get a lot of flack. The administration started to get a lot of flack about how ill-advised it may have been to do that, how we didn't know the results. We didn't, some people were saying we don't even know about the chemical weapons and who's responsible for that. But that's something to remember. The, the next thing is, when you, you brought this up, but becoming presidential, right? Mm -hmm. the, the person that you cited who said, well, now he's, you know, he's being a strong president. Jimmy Carter, mm -hmm. right, who was looked at as kind of a weak president historically mm -hmm. by the people who spin that stuff. Not one American lost their life. One American soldier in combat lost their life in the four years that he was president, right? There were, right. There, were, there were eight people who went in to try and rescue hostages, which was not combat, and the, and the, and the helicopters crashed. Why isn't that presidential? Why isn't why, why isn't, isn't that strong? Why isn't that strong? Why is it not? Why is it presidential yeah. only to cause destruction? He because became president. He was president. He's a strong president. No, Jimmy Carter was a stronger president yeah. than Donald right. Trump. Well, we've bought into like this Machiavellian, you know, image of what a leader should be, right? Yeah. And so. For, for a lot of Americans, and again, I don't think that this is something that Americans just feel on their own. I think that it's decades of conditioning by the mass media, which makes people think like you need to be strong by being forceful and violent, yeah, right? Yeah. Diplomacy and is always something that takes a back seat. It's strength, we don't really care about intelligence. We never really have culturally in America, and certainly not when it comes to the president. But 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 our viewers understand this formula. You drop a bomb, you destroy a building maybe, maybe you destroy a human. But what do you create? You guys have seen this for more than a decade now. You create other terrorists. And if a bomb this big can create a couple terrorists, what does a 21,600 pound bomb create? That's a good Probably point. a hell of a lot more terrorists. And you brought up a point about the two actions he's taken so far. So Trump gets a lot of credit or whatever for being unpredictable. And in some ways he is, but in some ways he's not. When it comes to praise, positive and negative reinforcement, he's very, very predictable. And so he launches a couple of 59 cruise missiles in Syria. Democrats and Republicans largely applaud him. Some of his supporters don't like it. He drops this bigger bomb on ISIS. Everybody seems to love it, it makes us all feel patriotic. So what does he do next week when he's already used the largest non-nuclear warhead we have? A guy who's previously said he doesn't understand why we don't get to use nuclear weapons in war. I know I'm the hysterical one who's worried about that, but he's previously said it. People who've been in meetings with him have said they've had to try to convince him that that's crazy and he hasn't seemed convinced by it. I'm worried about what this praise is gonna do to a crazy person like Donald well, Trump. Well, in this case, I don't know if this is gonna soothe you at all. But in this case, um, he at least, uh, he collaborated with members of the military who know what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? And so that that made me feel a little better about it. It wasn't something, a decision that he made unilaterally. It seemed like he yeah. was more willing to actually listen to experts about whether or not this is a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I would hope that those same experts would be against using a nuclear weapon. Yeah. And they would understand the ramifications they of that. They would, but again, we went through the actual process of how you launch a nuclear weapon. And there is nothing that stops him right. theoretically from doing it. Right. And it, it doesn't always, require generals right. to sign on to it. The real resistance is fighting against Trump and the establishment. Help us get investigative reporters that are gonna investigate both of them. TYTnetwork.com slash go.